Welcome to the Rainbow Push Saturday Morning Community Forum. We've just finished a historic convention. It's our 55th convention, and we are so excited about all of the information that we were able to bring to you. We dedicate the broadcast today to the memory of Richard Trumka, who died suddenly this week. Uh, and he was such a friend of the civil rights movement, such an activist for labor, particularly the United Mine Workers. And so we are praying for his family and for American labor. Uh, he's been fighting uh, for rights of ordinary people for many, many decades. And so we salute Richard Trumka. May he rest in peace. Today is the anniversary of the 1965 Voting Rights Act, which was uh, made possible in many ways by those who marched from Selma to Montgomery, 1965. President uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act. And today we are still fighting for rights that uh, we were fighting for in 1965. We're fighting voter suppression techniques that are launched across, uh, the, across, the, across individual state legislator, legislatures in America. 47 state legislatures have passed laws that restrict, suppress, and almost deny our voting rights to many people. We're still fighting for ex-felons to have the right to vote once they've served time in many states in America. Push news briefs. Each and every week we want to give you news that you should be aware of and give you uh, rather our uh, analysis of some critical issues that we face today. One, uh, you will hear from Bishop Tavis Grant. He's going to talk about uh, the work that he and Reverend Jackson have been doing uh, to uh, address these voter suppression tactics that have been initiated by 47 states across the nation. This is Bishop Tavis Grant, the National Field Director for the Rainbow Push Coalition. I want to thank you for being a part of our Saturday morning international forum. I want to thank you for joining our many sessions as a part of our international uh, conference this past week. Go to our YouTube page, subscribe to that page, and you can see archive sessions from a week full of information, education, and engagement. Of course, we're coming to you uh, from our work in Austin, Texas, along with uh, Bishop William Barber, Freddie Haynes, and Bishop James Dixon, as we walked a Selma to Montgomery type march from Georgetown, Texas, to Austin, Texas, 30 miles. Voting is our free speech and democracy. We must protect the right to vote. Pass the Voting Rights Act, federal protection. It can no longer be a state's right, it must be a national right for everybody. I want to thank Bishop Barber and Reverend Jackson for uh, borrowing my legs. I walked all 30 miles as we we're pushing to uh, end voter suppression in over 40 states with 300 pieces of legislation across the country. Of course, that work culminated in Washington, D.C with thousands of persons, and activists, pastors, civil rights leaders, and union workers uh, converged on our nation's capital to urge the Senate to end the filibuster. It is the most illegal, immoral, and unconstitutional piece of legislation that has been used against black and brown progress, and we've had enough. I want to thank Reverend Jesse Jackson for meeting this week with Senator Joe Manchin and expressing his moral uh, aptitude, his moral position on ending the filibuster, passing the Florida People's Voting Act, passing the, the uh, John Lewis Voting Advancement Act, raising the $15 minimum wage, raising that wage 
lifts 32 million people to another quality of life and another level of living in our nation uh, as it impacts low to no wage workers and of course DC statehood. This fight is on and you want to join it, go to rainbowpush.org or go to Twitter, Instagram and or YouTube. It's so critical right now as we face the most consequential existential crisis to our democracy. When we win, Democrats win. When we win, democracy wins. And we win, you win. It's always better when we get together. And of course, don't ever forget, we're keeping hope alive. Thank you. We also join with Congressman ALC and Congresswoman Cori Bush as they are fighting against uh, the lifting of the moratorium on foreclosures and uh, evictions. Why? Because we, are not, we do not need to increase the number of homeless people on the streets of America. And then uh, we want you to hear from today Attorney Natasha Banks who will share some action items which resulted from our powerful women's uh, uh, round table held during the Rainbow Push Convention. Good morning. My name is attorney Natasha Sarah Lorraine Banks and welcome to Rainbow Push Coalition's Saturday Morning Forum where we will hear reports from our thousand churches connected. But first, I want every woman here to go to our YouTube page now so that you can watch the International Women's Roundtable and Luncheon that aired on Tuesday, August 3rd, where we provided every virtual and in-person attendee with a program just like this with the list of action items on the back of the program that I want to share with you now. Number one, to ensure our democracy and our voting rights, ask your U.S. Senator to vote yes on the For the People Act, the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act, and the Washington, D.C. Admission Act. Action item number two, for police accountability reform, to ensure effective policing in our states and the protection of all citizens, contact your senators and ask that they bring forward the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act. Action item number three, for medical equity and access. To expand access to affordable health care coverage, contact your governor and ask your state to adopt the Affordable Care Act provision to expand Medicaid to adults and tell your legislators to support the Medicaid Saves Lives Act. Action item number four, for equitable COVID-19 vaccine availability. As the American vaccine supply begins to outpace its demands, we must do our part to close the gap on the global vaccine shortage. Contact your legislator and ask for support on global COVID-19 vaccine expansion efforts. And action item number five, we have to debunk the myths. The COVID-19 vaccines are medically proven to save lives and help minimize transmission. Confront misinformation with the facts. As we use more vaccines, COVID-19 cases, hospitalizations, and deaths are diminishing, even in the face of the Delta variant. It is critical that you share with your family and your friends and your community of those who are not vaccinated to get vaccinated. Our lives, your life, depends on it. Encourage everyone to get vaccinated. For more information on these action items, please visit www.rainbowpush.org. Life is a beautiful journey. Everyone has their own path and their own pace. Our job is to help them get there. And today, the way forward has never looked brighter. Because today, CVS Health has assembled all the elements to not only help those we serve get well, 
but help them stay well in body, mind, and spirit. Together, we're bringing expert care to local communities, to front doors, into homes, and hands, creating welcoming moments, millions of times each day, more affordable, accessible, simple, and seamless. We are healthcare innovators, delivering health with heart, firm in our belief that when we put people first, we move health forward. It's a new day in healthcare, and tomorrow we'll go farther still. Because life is a beautiful journey. And no matter where you want to go, we'll be with you all the way. Hello, Rainbow Coalition family and conference attendees. On behalf of my colleagues at CBS Health, it is my honor and pleasure to announce the Jesse Jackson Scholarship Program for students pursuing degrees related to healthcare and or other business related education. Now, not every student's path to education is the same. So we've expanded this program to encompass vocational programs, two year degree programs and four year degree programs. Now, no one knows better than Reverend Jackson that education is absolutely foundational and critical to achieving true social justice and equity. And that's why these scholarships are part of a nearly $600 million commitment towards social justice and equity that CVS Health has made. Now, in this moment of announcing these scholarships, I think it's very appropriate to close with a quote from Reverend Jackson. What is the American dream? The American dream is one big tent, one big tent. And on that big tent, you have four basic promises equal protection under the law, equal opportunity, equal access, and fair share. And again, we are honored to be taking the journey to all four of those promises for deserving students in partnership with Rainbow Push Coalition and Reverend Jesse Jackson. Thank you. For those of you I haven't had the opportunity to meet, I'm Sheila Gallucci Davis, General Counsel and Vice President Philanthropy and Corporate Responsibility for Subaru of America. I first want to say a heartfelt thank you to Reverend Jackson for his inspiration over the many years and to his colleagues, Mr. Graves and Ms. Weathers. The Rainbow Push Automotive Project has been driving actionable change toward diversity and equality in our industry for over 20 years and Subaru is honored to have been a partner in those efforts since 2003. Thank you for your inspiration, your dedication, and your partnership. And for those in the Subaru family tuning into this event, thank you for continuing to motivate us to be more than a car company. It is the passion exhibited each day that helps us to see opportunities and drives us to make them realities. One of those opportunities that we are turning into a reality is why I'm speaking to you today. I am very excited to announce the launch of the Subaru University Scholarship for Automotive Excellence. The program is designed to help bring economic stability and growth opportunities to its recipients, as well as economic opportunity to our neighbors in our hometown of Camden, New Jersey. This was in no small part inspired by the work of Reverend Jackson and his Rainbow Push team. In the coming year, the scholarship program will provide six students with the opportunity to earn an associate degree in automotive technology at Camden County College. In addition, as part of the program, selected students will be assigned a retailer mentor available to support the students during their studies and, importantly, provide them with internship opportunities. But it's not only the students in Camden who will benefit. We recognize the power of diversity. Launching a program that will advance individual student opportunities, strengthen our hometown of Camden, and create an opportunity to impact the diversity of the talent pipeline in our industry, we count that as a win-win-win. Or, as I would call it, a threefer. Six students, like the six stars in the Subaru logo. We have no doubt these students will also shine bright. 
So thank you again, Reverend Jackson, your team at Rainbow Push, and our Subaru family members for inspiring us to launch this scholarship and for all the work you do each and every day to advance diversity and cultivate equality. Thank you also to our colleagues for sharing their wisdom during this event. As we say at Subaru, thank you all for being starful. My name is Sean Suggs, Group Vice President of Social Innovation for Toyota North America. And my diversity commitment is I will promote and create limitless possibilities for all. What an exciting day we have. Toyota and Push for Excellence has partnered years ago to create the Toyota Jesse Jackson Fellow Scholarship. And today I am so proud to announce the winners of that prestigious award. We've got 10 dynamite students that are looking forward to not only participating in this process, but they're our future. And we really, really believe that. We also know that education is the engine. It's the engine for opportunity to level the playing field. And our partnership with Rainbow Push has proven that year over year. So again, congratulations to all the recipients. For 2021, we're excited to get more people engaged and involved in Rainbow Push, supporting the programs of Push for Excellence and the Citizenship Education Fund. Now, if you're interested in public policy and you want to help change the policies that impact those who are incarcerated, you can do so. If you're interested in impacting public policies that benefit education and businesses with social economic solutions, you can do that as well. You can become a policymaker by becoming a member of Rainbow Push right now. Now, if you believe in the scholarships that we've given to thousands of students each year, you can help us out. We've awarded more than $10 million in scholarships year to date. Now, you can help young people achieve a higher education by becoming a member of Rainbow Push right now for the annual fee of only $35. And if you're a student or a senior, it's only $15. You can help us make a difference in the lives of millions. Now, if you watch us every week, or if you listen to us on the radio, or if you're viewing on social media, we need you to become a member. And how do you become a member? It's simple. Visit us at rainbowpush.org and press join. Maybe you'd like to support the work of PUSH. If so, it's really simple. You can do so by texting the word PUSH, that's P-U-S-H, to 41444 on your cell phone, and you can give any amount that you feel comfortable giving, or you can call us at 773-256-2775 or go to rainbowpush.org and PUSH donate. So whenever you want to support, you can do it from anywhere. So keep pushing because we're going to keep pushing for you and keep hope alive. Today, we want you to hear from our members, some of our thousand churches connected members. I know you want, what is the church doing? We're in the middle of a pandemic. We're, we have poverty everywhere. We have all of these issues. Well, I want you to hear from some pastors religious leaders who are doing great things to change and transform our community. We will hear from Reverend Brian Smith, Chicago Theological Seminary, telling you what one seminary is doing in Chicago to change and impact communities where many of our interfaith partners uh, work. And then we have Bishop Henry Williamson, the presiding uh, bishop of the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, He's in the first district in Memphis, Tennessee. He's gonna share with you what some of the CME pastors are doing in both education and healthcare. And finally, uh, our keynote address will be given by none other than the Reverend Dr. Frederick Douglas Haynes, who's been joining Reverend Barber and Reverend Jackson in some of the marches for our voting rights in Texas. And he's going to share with you our keynote closing address today. I'm Reverend Brian E. Smith, Director of Strategic Partnerships at the Chicago Theological Seminary, where we are very proud because Reverend Jesse Jackson is one of our esteemed alumni, 
and we carry on the tradition of greater justice and mercy for all that we serve. We were blessed during the last summer to receive a $150,000 grant from the Henry Luce Foundation, which enabled us to provide emergency support for those dealing with challenges with respect to the COVID-19 pandemic. We were able to do four different things in order to serve our respective communities. We were able to conduct listening sessions for over 40 congregations based on the south side of Chicago and then later on the west sides of Chicago. We provided counseling and support services to clergy as well as technology grants to over 30 institutions located on the south and west sides of Chicago. The greatest value of this opportunity was the ability to convene various faith leaders from a variety of faith traditions and religions. We were able to serve Muslim, Jewish, and Christian congregations from a wide variety of denominations, AME, CME, UCC, United Methodist, AME Zion. The entire gamut was served through this opportunity. It was also an amazing chance for us to be able to witness various groups coming together on one accord, primarily congregations of 150 members or less. We discovered some exciting things. We realized through the process that we were not alone and that there were other faith leaders who were wrestling with the same challenges of the pandemic. It was also an amazing opportunity for us to provide material resources to congregations that needed them most. I estimate that we probably served well over 5,000 individuals that were impacted by these grants. Many of the congregations that were part of our program also operate programs that serve the homeless, programs that serve those uh, with food insecurity. We even have a Muslim group that provides halal meat to their residents. So it was an amazing opportunity to learn from a variety of cultures, a variety of religious groups, and we were able to understand that we are better working together than being separate. So I'm looking forward to additional opportunities for us to work together to deal with the various challenges facing our communities. We're very active now dealing with COVID-19 in terms of dealing with vaccine hesitancy and refusal. And so we are poised to make an impact not only on our individual congregations, but on the entire community as a whole. Rainbow Push is one of the most extraordinary organizations in the world. It's led by one of the most phenomenal prophets, preachers, and geniuses in our world, my good friend and brother, Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson, Sr. In 1991, while I was pastoring the 3,000-member church, Carter Temple CME Church in Chicago on the Great South Side, I had been working with Reverend Jackson for many years, from my student years at Garrett Seminary, when it was Breadbasket, Ben Branch, awesome time as we work to bring social justice, economic equity. Where I live, where I preside as the 52nd Bishop in order of secession in the Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, with more than 200 churches in Tennessee and Arkansas. And I serve as the chair of the Board of Trustees of Lane College, where you've come and elevated and educated the students of Lane. Wherever I've been, I've brought you, and you've come without hesitation. When we needed someone to light the conscience of the Memphis-Shelby County area, this tri-state area of Tennessee, Arkansas, and Mississippi, to renovate and resurrect the only black hospital we had during segregation. You came, sir, and lit a fire of awareness as a result seven years later of our work. Collins Chapel is now complete, completely renovated and is serving the homeless 24 hours, three shifts of people. 
with the room in the end homeless ministry. We couldn't have done it without your inspiration and insight. When in the black community, Orange Mound, historic black community of churches and homes, they closed their only grocery store and made it a food desert. Of course, I disagree with Kroger closing our only store that provided three vital services, fresh and good groceries, good prices, but there was also a black bank, Tri-State Bank branch there, and there was also a pharmacy. So we were losing three vital services. I called upon you again, and you came to Memphis and stood in that empty parking lot and the closed store and said, look, let us appeal to Kroger. And they did something they'd never done before in history of Kroger, a multi-billion dollar corporate giant met with us because of you. We sent them to your national office and we had our representatives there and to their national office. And when it was all done, and it took us a little while, they turned that Kroger store. First, they did not destroy it. They kept it. And then they turned it over to the super low store. Their competitor, they gave a million dollar store plus to a competitor in order to make sure, but it was all of the ministers, political, religious, and business leaders who came together. It was really a rainbow coalition. The mayor of the city and the mayor of the county, the county commissioner and the city worked together to get it done. And now, 24-7 is making good, healthy food. Thank you, champion. We're grateful. We greet you, my dear friend, how grateful we are. And now we've been able to have a 24-hour Collins Chapel Connection Hospital room in the end. And now as a result of Push It Sale and One Church, One School that we founded with Dr. Fredonia Johnson in Chicago is now nationwide church and school in partnership, teaching the value of life and value of learning. More than 200 partnerships in the CME Church, Baptist, Koji, every church, every faith community can and should partner with the school and build up united church, home, and school, and then pray and work to make sure we pour good STP into every school. Students, teachers, principals, parents, philanthropists, politicians, personal personality. I'm so grateful that we've always known that the salvation as well as the education will lead to liberation if we vote if we march, if we protest, and we pass this legacy on to ministries like One Church, One School, the Children's Defense Fund, urban ministries, letting people know that a man of color named Jesus out of the Bible, out of Egypt, have I called my son, that a man of color came to embrace the Rainbow Coalition, how we thank you. But we teach our people that Jesus was a black man, a man of color, and he came to save all colors, black, brown, red, yellow, and white. We teach the truth that while many of our white brothers and sisters were struggling to become civilized, we had from the continent of Africa astronomy, architecture, and the three great religions of the world. 
came out of Africa. The Jewish faith, the Muslim faith, which of course became for us the Christian faith. How thankful we are. We're grateful to you, Reverend Jackson. God bless you. Let me express my appreciation for the laudable leadership and pioneering prophetic witness and work of the Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson Sr. How we thank God for him, his amazing ministry that has not only impacted the world, but influenced so many of us on a personal level, especially those of us in ministry. So Reverend Jackson, I salute you for your work witness. I thank God for you, our inspiring icon, living, liberating legend. That's you, Reverend Jesse Jackson. I thank God for you, I pray for you, and I thank God that you continue to lead us onward and upward. Let me also salute all of you, my amazing colleagues, for the gift you are, not only to the body of Christ, but to this nation for such a time as this. You're in my prayers, and I thank God for Reverend Jeanette Wilson. I thank God for all of the Rainbow Push family for the wonderful work that you continue to do. And now our challenge is, as we, on one level, thank God and celebrate the great work that is being done, it also reminds us of our challenge to unite, to impact, and make a difference in this nation, in our communities, and yes, this world. And so in these few moments, I want to uh, lift up uh, the idea behind a thousand churches connected, a thousand churches connected for those who are disaffected, a thousand churches connected. I like that. I believe it was a few months ago, Roland Martin was covering a story that was evolving. The story had to do with someone who had been caught just across the street from the home of Vice President Kamala Harris. The person was caught in their car with a loaded rifle, rounds and rounds of ammunition, and Roland Martin's particular capturing or captioning of that episode is something that speaks to all of us for such a time as this. Listen to how Roland Martin captioned what was taking place in the life of our Vice President Kamala Harris. Roland Martin said, under constant threat. I park here parenthetically because that is the reality for where we are as a people in these disunited states of America. We are under constant threat. Yes, to be sure, last year during the so-called racial reckoning as a result of the murder of George Floyd, not to mention Breonna Taylor and countless others at the hands of police officers, there was supposedly a racial reckoning. And as always in the history of this country, in spite of the perceived progress that at the same time there has been a vicious backlash. The backlash has been seen in so many forms and so many ways. And that backlash is seen on, on the one hand in the what? Battle against Black Lives Matter as now Black Lives Matter has become a bad phrase in this country. Why? Because there's something in the racist bones of this country that does not want Black lives to matter. No wonder Professor Eddie Glaude Jr. says that the real sin of this country is a value gap where some are valued more than others and it is structured in the hierarchy of privilege where you have some at the top and their lives value more than those who are at the bottom. I'm simply suggesting that the structured value gap has been reinforced in spite 
spite of the racial reckoning that this nation supposedly went through last year, as now we see this backlash that has resulted in a battle against Black Lives Matter, conflict over critical race theory. Is it not mind-blowing that folk who don't even know what critical race theory is have a lot to say about it? Critical race theory in summation has to do with examining the structures created by laws in this nation that are not race neutral. As a matter of fact, they produce outcomes to the disadvantage of those who are disadvantaged. And yet we see white evangelicals propping up white supremacy. We see in the state of Texas where I am continuously fighting, we see sadly a governor who is pushing a bill for patriotic education. Why? Because there is conflict with critical race theory, a battle against Black Lives Matter, not to mention, here it is, a war on wokeness. That's simply suggesting that what's happening in this country right now is an all-out assault on democracy with black lives being on the front line, black lives being attacked, and we see it in so many ways. Don't you see it as we witness medical apartheid, the criminality of a justice system that is criminal and downright unjust, not to mention my sisters and brothers, environmental racism and injustice where we see a proliferation of landfills and toxic waste sites on our side of town. All of that is a war on black life. All of that is a war on democracy. I haven't even gotten around to what's happening in so many states, and that is a determination to find a solution or come up with a solution to a problem that does not exist. They call it in Texas voter integrity. Ha, ha, ha. Voter integrity. Integrity is a funny term, is it not? While you are lying about what? The fact that there was not one evidence, not one iota of evidence that there was any voter fraud in the last election, and yet you have states across this country country that are passing voter suppression bills in the name of voter integrity because they are targeting certain populations that they do not want to vote. And you know who they want to vote. They want the vote to only, or the franchise to only be exercised by those who are white, elderly, and bodily abled. I'm simply saying there is a war on democracy and black lives are on the front line being attacked and assaulted, and during this time where be, we are being disaffected afresh, we need to revisit the vision of the Reverend Jesse Jackson, who in conversation with Martin Luther King Jr. back in the day in Miami, they're conversing about what? A thousand churches across the country uniting to do the work of justice and bringing together all of that power would indeed make a difference. That's the vision behind a thousand churches connected because if we get connected, we can deliver the disaffected. If we get connected, we can liberate those who've been left behind. If we get connected, we can transform our communities and make America one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. If we get connected, justice will roll down as waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. But we got to get connected. How do we do it? Well, let's follow what happened in Scripture. The book lets us know that after Jesus, heaven's hero and earth's emancipator, our resurrected revolutionary had exited earth and, and taken a cloud like an elevator back to eternity to sit at the right hand of the Father, the Holy Spirit had been dispersed and dispensed, and the book lets us know the church of Jesus Christ was born, and several chapters later in the book of Acts, the Bible says that Paul is arrested on the Damascus Road. Then his name was Saul. He's arrested by Jesus 
on the Damascus Road and becomes the gospel globetrotter and trailblazing theologian from Tarsus. Well, when you follow the story of Paul, you soon discover that the church at her birth there in Jerusalem, the headquarters, the Christians were experiencing a time of persecution, injustice, and impoverishment. All of that was going on, and the Bible lets us know that Paul, I love it, he goes on a tour where he is collecting offerings from churches, and in essence, it's the first thousand churches connected because Paul says, I need those churches in Philippi, churches in Macedonia, Philippi, and Corinth, and, and on and on it goes to be a part of this offering because we want to engage in a stand of solidarity with those who are suffering in Jerusalem. They are being persecuted. They are impoverished. They find themselves victimized by injustice. And so what we have to do, we have to connect in order to benefit those who are disaffected. And that's exactly what goes on. They connect for those who are disaffected. And that is the vision of a thousand churches connected. Let me park here parenthetically and salute all of you because check this, I know you're doing the work. You're doing the work in your respective areas. Tommy Lewis is killing it in Alabama as he stands against voter suppression. Bishop Jackson, oh my God, literally took a stand against voter suppression in Georgia by ensuring, here it is, that corporations would be good corporate citizens and neighbors and stand against injustice or face a boycott. We know about the legendary work of Bishop Henry Williamson in education. I could call the role of all that's going on even here in Texas. Well, a group of us got together and stood against, here it is, racism in zoning practices and brought down a a, a a, a 10 story mountain of shingles that came to be known as Shingle Mountain, which was located right next door to a black community and sending off toxins in the air. The mountain is gone now because we came together in Dallas to make a difference. Listen, I could call the roll because so many of you are doing great work, but here is what Reverend Jackson wants us to do. He wants us to have the wisdom of pearls. Pearls, watch this. If you have one pearl here, another pearl there, another pearl here, another pearl there, that's beautiful. But guess what? When you string those pearls together, all of a sudden the value increases because they are connected. And that's what Paul is trying to do. He's connecting the churches to impact and influence what's going on with the hurting saints in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, what do we learn from that too? And I'm through. Number one, we learn, and I love this right here, that whenever our people are down for the count, they need people of faith to be down for the cause. I got to do that one more time because our people are down for the count, down for the count because we see racism that will hit you when you reach the top. Ask Hannah Nicole Jones. Hannah Nicole Jones should have received tenure at the University of North Carolina, but she did not receive it. It's sad. It's a reflection because even those at University of North Carolina said that she did not receive tenure because of racism. Racism will, racism will hit you no matter how high you go, but we also know what it's doing in our communities across the country. I'm simply suggesting that there are people in our community who because of racism are down for the count. But guess what? If we are down for the cause, the good news is we can rise up together and make a difference. I'll make this real plain. Henry Mitchell in his powerful book, Black Church Beginnings, talks about the fact that the black church was born during the horrific, heartbreaking horrors of slavery and the enslavement 
treatment of black bodies in these disunited states. And, and Henry Mitchell says something profound. He said, when the black church was born, every black preacher made it her or his business to transform their pulpits, watch this, into platforms for abolition. I love that right there. Every black preacher made it her or his business to transform their pulpits into platforms for abolition. That meant that what was going on outside that had our people down for the count, our preachers, our ancestral preachers, they united and understood that what was going on inside the church had to connect with and impact what was going on outside of the church. And they developed a theology of emancipation. They developed a ministry, watch this, of abolition because they understood that if they were going to have real worship in the house, they had to make a difference in the world outside of the house. And that's all I'm trying to share. And that is our people are down for the count, y'all. We got to stand up and be down for the cause, the cause of pursuing justice in, in health care, the cause of economic empowerment for communities that have been subjected to impoverishment, down for the cause of, of environmental justice, down for the cause of making a difference in our school system so our children are not diseducated or miseducated, but truly educated for their own liberation. I'm simply saying we've got to be down for the cause. Whatever goes on in the church, here it is, has to impact and influence what's going on outside of the church. If they could do it back then, remember the wisdom of Reverend Marcus Garvey. Garvey said what Africans have done, Africans can do. What black preachers have done, black preachers can do because it was black preachers who recognized the need for public education and gave birth to public education and its concept in the state of Florida that spread throughout the country in the, and in the aftermath of reconstruction and enslavement. Black preachers did that because black preachers recognized that we've got to be down for the cause when our people are down for the count. We've got to make sure that what goes on in the house impacts, influences, and is connected to what's going on outside of the house. But we can't do it if we're not connected. I got to wrap that thing up by saying our power is in our connection. If we're not connected, then we lack the power to make an impactful difference. We've got to be connected. Remember the wisdom of who is it? Mary McCloy Bethune. She said, you see my fingers right here? If I tap you with one of them, I may get your attention. Two of them, I'm not sure. But then she said, you let me bring these fingers together and form a fist. And that's power right there. That's power to get your attention. It's power to make a difference. What is Reverend Jackson asking us to do? He wants us to form the fingers of our respective prophetic witness, bring them together and form a fist because just as the saints in Jerusalem were suffering from persecution, injustice, economic exploitation, and impoverishment, our people are suffering right now. Let's form that fist. Let's fight the power because when we fight the power with that fist, we've got the power to make a difference in this world. We've got the power to make a difference in this nation. We've got the power to transform dark yesterdays into bright tomorrows. We've got the power to elect officials who are not politicians but representatives of our community because they do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. We've got the power, but we've got to be connected 
affected if we want to be a blessing to those who are disaffected. Let's rise up and do that. And when we do that, we will speed up that day. As Dr. King said, when all of God's children, black men, white men, Jews, Gentiles, Protestants, and Catholics will be able to speed up that day and say, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. But let's not stop with Dr. King. Let's go on with Jesse Jackson and say, encouraging us, keep hope alive. Keep hope alive alive because there are children in the ghettos and barrios of our nation who need us to come together. Keep hope alive because there are children at the border separated from their families who need our energy to, to be invested in justice, in immigration policy. Keep hope alive because our God is good and able. Keep hope alive because Jesus got up after being lynched on Friday by the Roman Empire. He got up with all power on Sunday. Keep hope alive because the Holy Spirit is our power who empowers us within to make a difference in the world around us. Keep hope alive and we shall overcome. God bless you. God keep you. We celebrate all of you for the great work you were doing. We applaud you and thank you saying keep on doing what you're doing. And as you keep on doing what you're doing, we'll make this nation what it ought to be. God bless you and God keep you. Hi, I'm Tim Lee. And I am Edison Matt Christian. And we have a special announcement for you. We do. Listen, do you have any children at home between six and 16 year olds, especially on Saturdays doing nothing? Well, if you do, Rainbow Push Coalition have hope for you. And that hope is in the form of a STEM and sports summer camp. Amazing. What does that include? It includes STEM. STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Okay. And that's going to break down into we teaching your students jobs for the future. Amazing. Drones, right? Yes, digital gaming. Digital gaming and robotics. Coding too. And coding, yes. Yes. We're also going to be teaching financial literacy. What are they going to be able to do with that money once they make it? Invest. <laughs> Uh -huh. They're going to invest, uh -huh. I think so. And then we cannot do anything, especially in this day and age, without the fitness and the sport. I'm ready for it, so guess what? Get ready. I'm on a turn rope. I'm jumping. We teaching double dutch. We teaching basketball. And we're running with the best. This whole event is free. I mean, free sports, free play. And free learning. Free food. Hmm. <laughs> Listen, if you want to take advantage of these opportunities that Reverend Jackson continues to give to yes. the community after 55 years. 55 years? You mean half of a century plus five? That's mathematics. Okay. Come wow. down to Rainbow Push, the headquarters at 930 East 50th Street. Or come to the website at www.pushexcel.org for more information. Listen, the dates of the program, as we conclude, it are, the dates are... July 17th. Which is this Saturday. Uh-huh, this and Saturday. And ends... August 28th. Yes, so we have all this time to have this much fun... Woo! ...with yes. your children, okay? Listen, when you get down here, you're going to see and hear Edmund Christian. You're going to see Tim Lee. And we are going to sign off now by saying, keep hope alive. I am. I am. Now, look, I am somebody. <laughs> and we're pushing for peace. Push Excel's goal is to inspire students to strive for excellence in education in spite of personal, family, and community challenges that they might experience. How do we do this? By advocating for educational policies that guarantee equal funding for all students without regard to race or economic standing. By engaging parents, students, and teachers in pursuing high quality education and striving for educational excellence at every level and by forging partnerships with community-based and public sector stakeholders in education. Now, Push Excel is a national model program with the purpose of connecting principals, parents, popular personalities, and students in a bond and to support students at every level on the educational ladder. Now, we want you to become a member of the Rainbow Push Coalition and Push Excel. Your annual membership can help us to change policies that impact students, colleges, and universities all around the country. So step up and sign up today. Membership is only $35, and if you're a student or a senior, $15.
just go to our website, rainbowpush.org, and push join to become a member or push donate to support the Push Excel program. You can also text the word Push Excel, that's P U S H E X C E L, to 41444 on your cell phone, and you can give us any amount that you feel comfortable giving or call us at 773 256 2775. Wherever you are, you can support us as we keep pushing for you. And remember to keep hope alive. Dr. Kim, I went to jail with a group of seven students July 17, 1960, I'm 60 years ago. We never stopped moving. I lost a few of jail cells and death. We never stopped moving. I thought it was time to write some of it down so the only commission range can learn how we did, what we did, and how global it was. We were speaking about Mandela in South Africa, uh, India, Qatar, uh, Gandhi in India, uh, here at home. This book tells the story, so please get it and give it to your friends. Read it, let's, let's argue about it, let's discuss it. Yep. So the book is Keeping Hope Alive, Sermons and Speeches of Reverend Jesse Jackson uh, Sr. It's, it's quite a good collection. You know, we've got sermons and speeches from around the globe because you have made such a global impact, not just here in the U.S., but around the world. Thank you for tuning in to our international Saturday morning broadcast. We need your support. Here are ways to give to Rainbow Push Coalition. Text PUSH, P-U-S-H, to 41444 to support the work of Reverend Jesse Jackson Sr. and Rainbow Push Coalition. When you shop, Amazon gives. Visit Amazon Smile and select PUSH for excellence as your charitable organization by starting your shopping at smile.amazon.com. Oh, we are sanctuary. sanctuary. We are sanctuary. When I think of Rainbow Push, I think of two words, social justice. Education advocacy. Political empowerment. Freedom and equality. Corporate partnership. Stop the violence. Save the children. Don't give in. Shut it down. If we don't give in. Shut it down. Political change. Inclusion. Evolution. Progress. Justice. Jesse Jackson. Keep hope. Keep hope. Alive. Alive. Keep hope. Keep hope. Alive. Alive. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. I am. Somebody respect me. Respect me. Respect me. Respect me. Never neglect me. Never neglect me. We want to be bridges in these cultural gaps. Yeah.